Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to be moving on in our science from when we were discussing biological evolution and fossils and dinosaurs and traits and the inheritance of traits. Okay, that was life science. So now we're moving on from biology, which is life science, and we're going to be moving on to physical science, which talks about force and motion. Now you can see this title page says friction and motion. Uh, but we are going to talk about friction too, but a better title for our unit is force and motion. So a force can include two or more objects that contact each other. Okay, think about a push or a pull. Every force on earth or in the universe is either a push or a pull. Think about yourself applying force to an object. If you were kicking a soccer ball, you'd be applying force. You'd be pushing that ball with your foot in a kicking motion. Or if you think about a pull, think about playing tug of war. Okay, you're pulling on a rope with your team to try to pull the other team to your side. Okay, gravity is a force that pulls us down to earth. So gravity is a force that was theorized by Isaac Newton, which you have seen his brain pop yesterday. Okay, so now you're also going to be learning about Isaac Newton's three laws of motion. Okay, we're going to get into that as well. Uh, and you'll be reading an article about that today as well. So think of this. Have you ever played baseball? Okay, when you swing the bat, you're pushing that bat and applying force from your hand to the bat. But then the bat is also applying a push force to the ball. So that's actually including three objects, your hands to the bat, pushing, so actually just almost pulling the bat, and then the bat pushes the ball. So those are all forces that are taking place with those objects. So if you look here, it says the bat changes both the speed and direction of the ball. The ball comes in one direction, but the force causes that ball to go in a different direction. That actually has to do with Isaac Newton's laws of motion. All right, so the greater the force on an object, the greater the change in motion. One of Isaac Newton's laws of motion say that for every action, this is the third law of motion, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the amount of force that you kick the soccer ball with causes the ball to travel with more speed and distance if you apply more force to it. So that's the reaction. Your action is your kick. The reaction is the ball changing speed and direction. So the harder you kick a ball, the faster and farther it will be moving. Force affects everything. So what are some forces? Okay, they're all pushes and pulls. Okay, swinging a baseball, dribbling a basketball, pushing a shopping cart, pulling a rope for tug of war. Um, if you're climbing steps you are pushing down on the earth on the steps to to cause your motion upward up the stairs okay as you are even just standing on earth gravity is pulling you down but your body weight is pushing you back up so like i said for every action there's an opposite and equal reaction the gravity pulls you down but you push back up against the earth so friction, okay, is a force. So when you're when you're walking, if you have sneakers on and you're on a hardwood floor, okay, the sneakers will grip onto the floor more with with more grip, more friction than your socks would. So your socks would cause you to slide a little bit because there's less friction with your socks than there is with your sneakers. Think about a hockey puck. If I took a hockey puck on the basketball court and I swung a hockey stick with it, 
it wouldn't travel very smoothly because there's a lot of friction on the hard wood. But if you were on the ice, which is where hockey is played, and you push the hockey puck with your stick, it would glide smoothly because the ice has less friction. So if you look at this road, it says, okay, slow down. So the tires on the car create friction and grip onto the road so that you don't slide all over the place. So it's a force that works against motion. It slows things down. The more friction there is, the less speed and distance an object will travel. So friction can make objects slow down or stop moving completely. So when you kick a soccer ball or any object, any ball, okay, friction is what causes it to stop. Another one of Isaac Newton's laws of motion say that an object at rest will stay at rest, meaning if the object is still, it will remain still unless another force pushes it. So that's the first law of motion. And friction is what stops that ball. If you think of a bowling ball, when you roll a bowling ball down the alley, it's got a lot of oil on the, on the lane, which causes less friction and the ball can glide across the bowling lane. If you took that same bowling ball on grass and you rolled it, it would not go very far because the grass creates a lot of friction. So friction makes work harder. A rough surface has more friction than a smooth surface. So if you look at this slide, you slide down it very quickly because of the little amount of friction. Snow has less friction as well than say grass, okay? The rougher the surface, the more friction that it has. So think of this. Have you ever ridden on a roller coaster? Smooth tracks are used on the roller coaster to reduce the amount of friction so you can go quickly on the roller coaster. So there's smooth tracks. There's prob they probably use a type of oil to make it smooth enough, enough to reduce the friction so that you can travel quickly because the object of roller coasters is to move quickly. So what is friction? If an object experiences a large amount of friction, what happens? So friction is a force that reduces motion or stops motion, okay? So when there is a lot of friction, a large amount of friction, it is more difficult for an object to move, okay? So that's what friction is. The less friction, think about the bowling alley, very little friction so that ball can travel along the bowling alley very, very quickly and smoothly. And the oil that they use reduces the friction even more. All right, so that is it for today. Just remember that any force is a push or a pull, okay? Um, we pull things and we push things, and objects in the universe push and pull. And friction, if you think of a rough surface, it has a lot of friction, and a smooth surface has a little friction. Okay, that's it for today. You'll have a little activity to go along with this. And I hope that you enjoyed this lesson on force and motion.